I am once again asking for your financial support. Hello, comic dudes. For today's episode of Super Steam Review Month, I've decided that today I'm going to become politically relevant. You may be thinking, Caden, what are you talking about? That's impossible! Don't worry, because last night I called over somebody who can help me obtain this higher level of thinking. Bernie Sanders Hand Puppet. Alright, Bernie Sanders, what do I need to do to obtain a higher level of political knowledge? Oh. Super Bernie World. This game was created back in March of 2020 because there was a lot of political tension in the air. I'm only joking. It's because some guy named Bernie is a walking, breathing meme. During this time, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing this man's face. Whether it be him sitting in a chair or him asking for your financial support, he did it all. Then he lost the election. But that's irrelevant. He still won in the hearts of all who played this game. In the midst of all this political meme goodness, two rogue indie developers named Named on Screen, as you can see, just look at the screen, they're both there, look at the screen, created this game for a good laugh, and as an encouragement for all who play to vote. The working theory for another reason this was made could be inspiration from all those fake Bernie Mario box arts that were popular all over Reddit during the time. I can't actually tell if the person who made this game actually wants you to vote for Bernie, for I have no idea. I cannot read irony. During this time, a lot of people were stuck indoors due to some weird illness, which probably added to the appeal of sitting down and playing this game for a short while. If you couldn't tell already by the title, this game is a parody of Super Mario World. However, it takes more inspiration from Super Mario Bros. 1 gameplay-wise. So, for this episode, the SGCFM score returns, but because this is such a shorter game than the other Steam games I reviewed, each segment will be a tad shorter than usual. Let's just jump straight into it, Bernie Hand Puppet. Okay, whatever you say. Wada boom, welcome to the title screen. I like the colors. Once you press start, you're greeted with an intro conversation between two political figures. I don't know, I'm not politically aware just yet. The start of every single world has one of these, so be prepared, the dialogue gets real. Though they're usually just talking about politics and stuff, aka who the heck cares. Every level of this game is representative of a US state that you need to try and win the vote of. We got all the greats like Florida, Louisiana, California, Every third level is a castle stage in which you need to imprison the other candidates so that you can have a higher chance of winning the election. Hold on just a minute, that's illegal. Besides that, a surface level playthrough is pretty simple. You play through two states, play the boss state, imprison the candidate, and then continue onwards to the next world. However, the final state, being DC, has a very different candidate to imprison from the other worlds but I won't spoil it here, you'll have to play it for yourself. Once you beat him, you get the credits, where all the enemies make a reappearance. This game doesn't really have too much of a story, the main character, Bernie, has very little character and his motivations aren't all too clear with all that corruption he's doing. But alas, this is a 2D platformer, so I don't really know what I'm expecting from this meme game. 2 out of 5 on the story meter. Hey Bernie, guess what? What? Chicken butt! Ah! This game is a 2D platformer, so the gameplay here isn't rocket science. You can jump, walk left and right, crouch, and even run. Unlike the Mario game this game takes heavy inspiration from, you can actually go back left whenever you want, which is a welcome addition. The HUD of this game has the world and level number, the name of the level, the score of the level, the number of votes you have for the level, and the time you have left in the level. But don't worry, because this timer is never anything to worry about. Also, this game doesn't involve the live system, which is an automatic W for me, because I hate that system. Now, these sorts of Mario parody games are notorious for their power-ups, so I'll just quickly cover them here. Super Cheese makes Bernie big and allows him to take one extra hit of damage and makes him taller. Fire Rose allows you to shoot fireballs with the run button. They're very bouncy and a little hard to aim, but once you get the trajectory correct, you're all good. Super Fist allows you to be invincible for like 20 seconds. Not too much to say on this one. Votes! Not really a power-up, but these take the place of the coins, and you collect a bunch of them within the levels. This game being a platformer, it has a lot of hazards. The classics remained untouched, like lava and pits being instant kills, but the enemies here are very special, so I'll list them here. Maga Goomba! Imagine Goombas, but with a red hat! That's it. Okay, suppose a guy like me dons a red hat, then what are they gonna say? Uh-oh. 
Trash man, these guys service the piranha plants, and holy Jesus am I an idiot. I always jump into these guys knowing darn well they're there, but my monkey brain doesn't conceptualize the definition of insanity. Mitch Troopa, I don't get the reference. Regardless, these guys act the same as Koopa Troopas with the shell gimmick. Thankfully, the shells are easy enough to dodge, so you don't need to worry all too much about that. Mitch Paratroopa, still oblivious to the reference, these guys serve as a living jump pad in the sense that you can use their heads to save yourself from falling into the abyss. But I am a huge coward, so any of these jumps that I can avoid, I will. Tiki Torture, I really need some help with this politics business, I don't get the connection between Tiki Torch guys and politics. Anyways, it's just a hammer bro with torches instead of hammers, and it doesn't really matter what they're throwing, I'll hate them all the same. Ice Bullet Bills, the bullet bills of this game, and boy are they irrelevant, I genuinely think I saw these guys at most twice in my playthrough. Also, needless to say, I do not get this reference. Go, go, po, boo, go, po, boo, go, poo, poo, go, boo, go, go, poo, I, I, go, boo, go, go, po, poo. I genuinely don't think this is a political reference, I just think his name is funny and that it was done on purpose. Regardless, these guys suck and I hate them. I hate enemies that punish my reckless abandonment for most, if not all, levels. Republicans, which play the role of the bosses for each world, and they will shoot flaming hot Cheetos as you try and get to them. I can't explain this. If you don't believe me, the credits say that they're flaming hot Cheetos. I don't get it. Politics are way too advanced for me. The enemies and gameplay of this game, while pretty decent in terms of 2D platformers, don't really have any originality when it comes down to it at all. Most if not all enemies and power-ups are just reskins from Super Mario Bros. 1, so I'll be giving this part a 2.5 out of 5. Also, don't give me an r slash whoosh because this is just an overanalyzation for the fun of it. Listen, Bernie, the only reason I'm so hard on you is because I care about you. My game has no flaws. Stop being a loser. 1 out of 5. Once you played the game, there's no reason to play it again. I feel really bad about that last one, Bernie, so here, have a snack. I'm such a nice guy. That's right, Gamer Nation, we're back to the feel segment of the Super Steam review. When it comes to the pixel art in this game, the art style is quite simple but an effective way. All of Bernie's sprites just make him look like he's having the grandest of times, and the art for the backgrounds and foregrounds are genuinely nice in my opinion for how simple they are. Especially the nighttime worlds because the dark blue and purple colors just melt my brain. The 4x3 aspect ratio also adds to the charm of this game, and really any game that has it. Overall, I like how simple this game looks and feels. 3.5 out of 5 on the feel scale. Man, I wish you looked as good as you did in-game in real life. And yes, I meant that. Music! This game has like two tracks, but the main one I really enjoy. I just kind of wish it didn't loop over and over again. Price! This game's free! No need to complain. Difficulty! This game is pretty easy, with the time limit on levels never getting close to zero and the lack of the live system, the only thing you have to fear is death itself. I didn't say it was laughably easy, okay? New York was kicking my butt. We're talking a solid 4 out of 5 on the miscellaneous scale, but it's mainly carried by its price more so than anything else. Well, Bernie, I'd say that this review is a resounding success. It's time to calculate the score. Hello? Destroy the hand puppet as soon as you can. He's evil! Super Burning World has earned itself a 2.6 out of 5 on the Super Steam Review score. Feel free to debate that in the comments, that's why you have a voice. Anyways, I'll see you all next time if I'm not dead.